guys, we're here with WTF Car Reviews, and today we're going to be reviewing the all-new 2024 Ram 2500 Rebel. And big thanks to Christopher and the rest of the management and staff here at Furman Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Newport, Ritchie, Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below, and if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Newport, Ritchie, Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And as for Christopher. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Ram 2500 Heavy Duty has been part of the Ram pickup segment since 1981. For 2019, the fifth generation Ram 2500 was released. And last year for 2023, Ram introduced this off-road oriented Rebel trim, sitting right in the middle of the pack just above the Laramie and beneath the Longhorn and Limited, sharing a place with the Power Wagon. But unlike the Power Wagon, which is only available with a 6.4 liter Hemi V8, the Rebel that you see here can be optioned in with a 6.7 liter Cummins that we have here. With a $70,000 base price plus $9,700 for the Cummins, what else do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, you notice your full LED headlamps with an LED daytime running strip. It's a projector for the low beam and our high beam right next to it. With a running light underneath and a fog light down below. Full front parking sensing, forward facing camera, and we get the 360 here with the level 2 equipment group. We get a functional heat extractor for the hood, aggressive bulge, 2500 heavy duty badging. And I like the red contrast for that lettering, unlike the 1500, which has blue and clear lettering, even for the night edition. I also like the black trim up front, typical for the Rebels, even for the 1500s, and the Ram badge right up front. We get some aggressive fender flares too for the Rebel, and some super aggressive all-terrain tires with these 20-inch rims, black and silver contrasted. We get an eight-lug pattern. The tires are Goodyear Wrangler Duratrax. They are super aggressive, almost like a mud terrain for the tread pattern with a really aggressive max payload. Hopefully you can pick it up on camera. It's like 3,640 pounds up front and 3,305 pounds out rear. And that's for the cold as well. The dimensions are 285-60 R20 with a black and silver contrasted rim Ram logo in the center cap, and again, very aggressive tread pattern. We got a Cummins turbo diesel logo in the corner. Again, it's a $9,700 option, but it makes this truck significantly more capable. We get a Ram logo too, or Ram badge in the corner. I like this two-tone paint color for the Rebel trim. I'll take a step back. Hopefully you guys can pick up the side profile for this 2024 Ram 2500 Rebel. This two-tone paint color is also beautiful. I'm usually not a fan of this blue metallic, at least for the 1500s, but for this Rebel trim with the more aggressive tires and this black contrast for the bottom portion, I think it actually looks really clean. We mentioned the smart access for the driver and the front passenger. We get the tow mirrors too with an LED turn signal on them, blind spot monitoring on the glass, and we get two pockets. This bottom pocket shows you your rear wheel area a lot better too. Black trim for the bottom part of the window trim, all body color up top, out rear for the bed area. The gas cap, it's not pushed to open, but no latches to pull either. Of course, diesel fuel with your diesel exhaust, diesel exhaust fluid right next to it. Additional fender flare, same rear wheel and tire setup. The only difference is a smaller overall brake caliper. Hopefully you can see upgraded suspension and the frame. Unlike a lot of the trucks we've been seeing from Ford and GM, I don't even see a hint of rust anywhere on this truck. Out rear, we get the LED tail lights too with the safety features and sensors housed in this Ram area. Full LED, we get the black bumper too. Rebel badge, Ram in the center, typical for the Rebels. Four by four in the corner, rear view camera, trailer hitch. I'll leave a link right here to show you exactly what this truck with the diesel can tow. And speaking of tow, let's drop this tailgate real quick. We also get a fifth wheel setup for this truck, making the towing capability even better. We get the onboard electric charging in the corner too. It's 115 volt. 400 watt and we also get our electrical system for the trailer hitch if we were using the gooseneck and the electrical system for the trailer hitch down below right over there i believe it's a 6.4 foot bed not a whole lot bigger than what i have on my 2024 or 2023 ram bighorn we don't get the step here either so in order to get into this bed you have to grab onto this tailgate take a step out onto this bumper and pull yourself up not the easiest overall process but once we're up here you see we get the led third brake light here too with a camera. We don't get a digital rear view mirror, unfortunately, and we don't get ram etched into this bed area. We have quite a few sets of tie downs. We have one set in the rear corner with a little bit of a cleat. I'm not sure what you would call it up top and the same thing in the opposite corner. So a total of eight 
tie downs. Hopping out of this heavy duty truck isn't the easiest process, especially not with this lift kit and super beefy tires. I know it can be added in the aftermarket, but I really wish we added a step here for the Rebel trim. You can check out your heavy duty rear axle. Everything looks super, super aggressive down here, especially with the upgraded suspension setup for the Rebel. You got your exhaust in the corner for your 6.7 liter Cummins inline six cylinder diesel. And speaking of that power plant, let's fire it up and hear how she sounds. All right, guys, that was the sound of the Cummins 6.7 liter turbo diesel inline six cylinder sold by Ram for the 2024 2500 Rebel. And it sounds okay cranking out 370 horsepower, 850 pound feet of torque, and there's a new high output version available for the 3500s, which cranks out 420 horsepower, 1,025 pound feet of torque. With this regular output turbo diesel, you can expect a 6,800 pound off road four wheel drive truck to get the 60 around eight seconds and with the higher output around seven and a half for the 3500s. We get a Ram heavy duty logo etched in this plastic trim. And what you see is basically what we get, the strut tower braces should help the handling tremendously for this heavy duty truck. We can shut this hood right down, take a step over here to the side. The hydraulic struts are appreciated. We can take a step back, walk around this 2024 Ram 2500 Rebel with the Cummins one more time. And it is a beautiful truck. I personally prefer this over a power wagon simply because of the addition of the Cummins and a two-tone paint color looks awesome. Taking a step inside, let's see what we get with about a $70,000 base price, about $80,000 with the Cummins. Throw the lights back to auto so the truck's not yelling at me. We said that this vehicle sits right above the Laramie and it is equipped just like the Laramie. It's not quite as loaded as a Longhorn or a Limited, but with this level two equipment group, we still get that massive touchscreen, the Harman Kardon audio system, and all this beautiful trim all throughout. Up top, we get the leather stitching, just like on the Laramie with the wood trim beneath, more leather and a gushy soft leather armrest, two window auto one touch, smoked aluminum door handle, two person memory seats. We got the adjustments all throughout for the lighting and auxiliary controls, a little bit of storage underneath the grab handle and a massive storage down below. You'll stack two 14 inch subs on top of each other with a removable cup holder where you'll fit a Red Bull 12 ounce water bottle and a 16 to 24 ounce water bottle right in front of it. We get two Harman Kardon speakers on the door panel, additional one in the center. The seats are beautiful. Rebel specific seats, they're very similar to what you get from a Laramie, just no suede Alcantara contrast. They're still perforated, heated and ventilated. Fully adjustable lumbar control. You can recline, drop, lift and slide the front seats. We also get power deploying running boards, which is a convenient feature. Taking a step inside, the running boards help a lot with the step-in process. Put in the brake, engine start stop, and everything fires right to life. But we mentioned that this interior is just about the exact same as a Laramie. It's very similar to what I have in the Bighorn outside of just the leather stitch trim that I do not get in the Bighorn. The steering wheel is basically the exact same. Perforated for the nine and three area, nine and three feels good in your hand. You get three spokes down below with specific X contrast stitching. I also don't get that on my big horn. The horn area is rubberized. The horn itself, really loud and aggressive. People should be definitely getting out of your way. We'll do a window check. We get dual panes. That's also an appreciated feature. And all Cummins equipped Rams get the active noise cancellation feature for this diesel. The stocks have a satisfying click. We get this 12.3 inch digital gauge display too as part of the level two equipment group. Definitely don't get that in my big horn. The red line starts at about 3,200 RPM. Diesel exhaust fluid on the left, coolant temperature underneath the tack. On the right side, 120 mile an hour speedometer, coolant temperature beneath it, and the diesel fuel in the bottom right corner with a digital speedo in the center. The adjustments, we have driver info, the different display, vehicle info. Here we can check out all sorts of our vehicle information. And tire pressure is heavily loaded up. So we'll see how the ride quality is once you take it out for a drive. If you want softer 1500 style ride quality, you can drop the PSI by about half, drop it to about 40, and it'll ride a lot more similar to a 1500, but it's also gonna have a very similar payload and towing capability as a 1500 if you drop the tire pressure. Anyway, you can see everything else that's potentially available, trip A, trip B, navigation. You can also check out a map at all times. Now that it's loaded up, we have a heads up map. You can see right in front of this 
digital gauge display. We also have our off-road information, vehicle dynamics and pitch and roll, trailer tow, trailer brake, and the trailer tire pressure system. That's about a $600 option. Audio, messages, screen setup settings, and a digital speedometer right back where we started, and a fully digital display as well. This is my personal favorite screen to leave it at, so we will leave it there. I mentioned the stocks have a pretty satisfying overall click. We get auto headlamps, auto high beams, and auto rain sensing wipers. The auto headlamps are on the left, fog lights, and zone lights. Interior brightness on the right side. Parking brake, and hopefully get a good look at the pedals, which are power adjustable. We don't get a telescoping steering column, just the tilt only, but since we have the power adjustable pedals, not the end of the world. The gear selector controls a six-speed automatic transmission. Backup camera, let's take a quick look. Super high resolution with a 360 right next to it, guidance lines and trajectory. We can check out the different views. See a forward-facing camera too. Over the top forward-facing with guidance lines and trajectory, that's nice for off-roading. Same thing out rear, and you can see everything going on in your bed, the adjustable center line. This final camera, I guess this is if you have auxiliary cameras, auxiliary one and two. We don't have either of those, so we'll just go back where we started. We'll see a cargo camera, forward camera, rear cam, aux two, trailer reverse guidance as well. Let's check that out, trailer reverse guidance. So here you can see everything on the left and the right side. It's, I guess, park through trailer if need be. Throwing right back in the park, we'll return right back to the map, four wheel drive information on the left side, no four wheel drive auto. We get two high, four high, and four low. Hill descent control and axle lock. It says heavy duty up top, engine start stop, nice aluminum trim underneath, leather stitching all throughout. That's not something you get on the big horn and leather stitching for the dashboard. Harman Kardon sound system, Ram, more grained wood trim. The 12 inch touchscreen, same thing that I have on my Ram. The response is excellent. You can see the cost of diesel in all these gas stations. So it automatically adjusts for the type of fuel that the truck takes. We check out the home screen. Response again is excellent. Song is currently playing with the navigation, media, comfort right next to it. My one complaint with this truck is since we get the 12 inch touchscreen, the heated and ventilated seats are controlled all through the touchscreen. There's no hard buttons. There's a little bit of room up top. I kind of wish they added more buttons for the heated and ventilated seats and heated steering wheel. But again, very minor complaint. My personal favorite screen to look at all times would be the map, so we'll leave it there. Trailer brake controller, volume, and tune both have very satisfying resistances to it. We get our exhaust brake too. Here we have adjustments from full exhaust brake and automatic exhaust brake. We'll leave it off tow haul right next to it and you turn on or off your front and rear parking sensing. Two USB A and C ports, nice storage compartment, good area for a phone. Massive storage down below. You'll fit bowling balls. I could fit probably six or seven of my water bottles in here. 115 volt, 400 watt AC outlet down below with more storage all throughout here. It's not lined with felt like my dad's Longhorn is. The armrest is gushy soft. It says Rebel Ram on it. You can open it up, lined with felt, additional USB port. And the top tier, we can see all of our trigonomic ratios, Pythagorean theorem, fraction of decimal chart, and the metric conversion chart as well. I don't know why you'd need it, but Ram offers it in all of their trucks. The glove box up top, it's outlined in this faux wood trim, lined with felt with a light and you'll fit probably a pair of shoes in there. Down below, it is more spacious. You'll also fit a pair of shoes in there, maybe fit a third shoe with our wheel lock in there as well. We get a frameless auto dimming rear view mirror. Interior lights are LED, three garage home link settings, a power deploying tailgate, and these buttons can adjust whether the lights are on or off when you open the door. Assist, SOS, and an opening fifth window out rear too, and it opens up pretty quickly. Cool. That's about it though guys for the front seat of this 2024 Ram 2500 Rebel Crew Cab 4x4. With a $70,500 base price, you guys can pause, take a look at all the standard features. $97.95 for the turbo diesel, $245 for the hydro blue pearl coat exterior paint color, a $1,095 credit for the customer preferred package, $2,195 for the trailer technology group, $1,940 for the safety group, $545 for the fifth wheel gooseneck, 7800 bucks for the level two equipment group but it comes loaded for this 2500 rebel 97.95 for the cummins thousand bucks for running boards thousand bucks for the 20 by 8 blind diamond cut aluminum wheels 395 for the dual alternators rated at 440 amps each 445 for the trailer tire pressure monitoring system 600 bucks for the spray and bed liner two grand for the destination totaling us out at 97,440 bucks making this just about a six figure truck, over six figures after taxes and fees. So it better be absolutely loaded, 
for that price point. And it is, you get just about everything you could possibly want or need. Heated and ventilated seats, massive 12 inch touchscreen, and a booming 17 speaker Harman Kardon audio system. Out rear, still leather stitching, of course, with the price point to be expected. We get that faux wood, more leather, gushy soft for the armrest, tool tiers of storage down below too. You'll stack two or three foot longs on top of each other. One Harman Kardon speaker out rear, we get the in-floor storage for the Ram 2500. We'll see if it's any bigger than mine. No, it's about the same size, just a different overall shape. These all-weather floor mats are also appreciated with a 3D Ram logo. We can move the rest of these floor mats out of the way. The seats lift up and we get some lockable storage down here as well with an extension, giving us a flat floor. You can throw a sleeping bag back here and sleep in the back of your 2024 Ram if need be. And the flat floor can be useful for all sorts of other things, pets and whatnot. You can just drop the seats right back where they were. Taking a step inside again, the running board to make things significantly easier. And taking a step inside, I'm a little bit over six feet tall, sitting behind my seat settings. And I still have about 10 inches to a foot of knee room, headroom. I got at least two inches. So if you're under six foot eight, six foot nine, you'll sit in the back of a 2024 Ram 2500 with no problem. You get a map pocket behind both the front seats, heated rear seats, USB A and C ports, 115 volt AC outlet of 400 watts, two additional cup holders. We get the Armrest, it's not a full console armrest like you would get on a 1500, but it's leather stitched with two cup holders that you'll fit up to 16 ounce bottles in. The rear light is LED, cool. We got two additional speakers back here. Nothing in the rear of the truck, unlike the 1500 with the upgraded audio system, but there's subtle differences here and there. But for the most part, the cab is very similar to a 1500. It's the frame and the overall truck itself with the power plant where you'll see the biggest differences. Hopefully you can hear that Cummins just idling over there. It sounds a little bit like a school bus. I've never been the biggest fan of diesel trucks simply because of the sound of them. But if I had something that I needed to tow, heavy trailer, heavy boat, the 2500 with the diesel is just simply unmatched with the gasoline power plant. And speaking of the Cummins diesel, let's take this 2024 Ram 2500 Rebel with the 6.7 liter Cummins turbo diesel. Let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the all new 2024 Ram 2500 Rebel with the 6.7 Cummins diesel. Let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. With light throttle, the torque is just unbelievable. We have 850 foot pounds of torque, which is just the regular output for the Cummins with 370 horsepower. For the 3500s, there's the high output option with 420 horsepower and 1,025 pound-feet of torque. That'll get to 60 in about three-tenths quicker than just the regular output. But as far as reliability and long-term is concerned, I'm sure the regular output will be more reliable as it's not gonna have nearly as much wear and tear in the long term. The isolation from the road here on the 2500, the wind noise is basically non-existent and with these more aggressive Goodyear Wrangler dirt track all-terrain mud terrain tires, the road noise is also very quiet. One thing I must say is as most heavy duty trucks with the added tire pressure and the stiffer overall axles and frames, the ride quality is not what you would get from a 1500. Needless to say, compared to a GM heavy duty truck, this still rides softer and compared to a Ford heavy duty truck, it just feels a lot more premium to the touch. The steering also feels a lot more on center compared to what you would get from a GM heavy duty truck. We're still going at relatively slow speeds. We'll go a little bit quicker at a certain point and see the steering changes up. But as far as a drivability perspective, the Ram heavy duty, although the Ram 1500, in my opinion, feels the biggest out of the 1500s, this heavy duty actually feels the smallest. This guy's about to take off. The longer I've been in this 2500 heavy duty, the visibility is fantastic. We have a really aggressive hood here for the Rebel with the heat extractors and all that, but even still, the front end visibility, the braking is so sharp here compared to the competition. The, wow, look at this guy. It's like he knows I'm recording. All right, we're not gonna be doing that here, but good thing we saw that taking a step out here about half throttle. Not quite as quick as that Mustang, but it does get up and go pretty well. It makes a decent sound too. With this inline six cylinder diesel, I think this is one of the better sounding diesels 
on the road today. The commanding view of the road is fantastic. Brakes feel good. Check out the body roll with these beefier tires. It feels surprisingly nimble. Compared to the 1500, this really doesn't feel like a whole lot loop here. We get strut tower braces that connect the chassis to the strut towers, which help the handling tremendously. We don't get that in the 1500. And because of that, you can really tell. The steering also at a little bit of higher speed. Yes, it's not perfectly on center. We're not driving a sports car here, but for a heavy duty truck, it feels really nimble. Now that we're on concrete pavement, you hear a tiny bit more road noise, but such a minuscule amount. They did such a great job with the isolation from the road. All diesel rams for the, 20, for the 2500s get active noise cancellation. Maybe that has something to do with it because it is quiet. Body rolls limited. For a 2500 truck, the overall like capability when it comes to a handling perspective, I was not expecting it to be this capable. And remember, this is an off-road truck. This is the Rebel with the super beefy 33-inch tires, 34-inch tires on this Ram 1500 with almost a two inch lift, more aggressive damping, and it still feels very solid. Right now we'll try out an acceleration from a slower speed. See the top end of this diesel on the gas. Good torque. Yeah, it definitely doesn't blow you away. It'll be interesting to see how the 6.4 would drive in the power wagon version of this truck. But this diesel, it's not gonna blow you away in terms of top end, but from a low end perspective, say you're going off-roading and you need to go up a steep hill, this diesel's low end is double of the low end in the 6.4. Top end, yes, that can be comparable, but from towing, from getting out of a dig, this diesel simply cannot be beat. Overall, guys, if you're looking for an off-road capable, heavy-duty luxury truck, emphasis on the luxury, there isn't an option or feature that this truck doesn't have. We have the 17-speaker Harman Kardon sound system, the 12-inch touchscreen with a excellent response to it. The GPS is one of the best in the business. We get heated and ventilated seats. It's just beautiful interior in general, beautiful exterior in general. If that's what you're looking for, guys, this 2024 Ram 2500 Rebel with the diesel is a must check out off-road heavy duty truck. It can still tow upwards of 16, 17 plus thousand pounds. And we have a locking rear axle, four wheel drive, and it's beefy Goodyear Wrangler Duratrack all-terrain mud terrain tires. I would definitely recommend checking out the 2500 Ram Rebel with the 6.7 liter Cummins. And a huge thanks to Furman CDJR in Newport Ritchie, Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Newport Ritchie, Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Christopher. And huge thanks to all you guys for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you and I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too, it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment, let me know what you like, let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment, let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you wanna see reviewed on this channel and I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope all of you have a great day.